Hey everyone, this is DWS Darius, and right now you're looking at one of the previous setups on my 210 gallon aquarium. This was one of my favorite setups, mainly because of the fish. These fish were very big and at the same time very bold, and that just calls for an amazing aquarium to watch. Shortly after making this video, an idea struck me, possessed me, and caused me to rehome the majority of the fish in this tank that would be predatorial or that I've seen in the past eat smaller fish. That left me with only two fish from my previous setup, my Mida cichlid and my Butter Cold Fry Tilapia cichlid, both of which were around a 12 inch mark. Now the idea was to do the impossible, create an aquarium with large fish living with small fish. So if you've seen any of my other aquariums, you know that it was always my goal just to get a lot of diversity. I love when I have a nice mix of color, and I also think it's very cool when you have a nice mix of size. So that was the goal with this aquarium, to go and have these large monstrous fish, along with smaller community fish, and in my mind, I envisioned it just to look amazing. Now the reason why I decided to go with these two fish, my Butter Cold Fry Tilapia Cichlid and my Mida Cichlid is because out of all the fish that I previously kept in that last setup, these two were the only ones that were unwilling to eat smaller fish. Whenever I fed feeders to the last setup, these two would just go and hide and they definitely didn't like seeing smaller fish being eaten. So I thought that that was their hope. Now, for those of you who are familiar with these fish, you know that they have quite a reputation. These are known to be some of the most aggressive fish in this fish keeping hobby, but my opinion and my theory is that all fish are different. Regardless of the common fish reputation, each fish will have a different personality. And I thought that I really had a chance of creating a community with smaller fish with these two fish. So I went and I added a huge assortment of small community fish to this aquarium. Now the first part of my plan worked out fine. The Midas and the Tilapia Cichlid had no intent when it came to eating these small fish. And I was adding fish as small as half an inch long and I still had no problems. But the second half of my plan, which I really didn't even consider, and that was just with the overall aggression. So even though these two monster fish were not willing to eat the fish, they were still willing to be aggressive towards them. And that was my main downfall. All the smaller fish were very terrified, so they pretty much spent the entire time at the top of the tank. And it really wasn't as peaceful and just as, as I imagined it in my mind. I wanted to see the fish swimming together. I wanted to see it nice and mixed. And that definitely didn't work out as intended. After that, I just decided to turn this entire aquarium to a nice community aquarium. So I had a nice mix of fish, all different colors, and a few different sizes, but I really didn't have the monster that I initially wanted. That tank lasted for a couple of months, and then somehow another switch in my mind went off, and here we are today, and I'm back to fish that are going to grow into monsters. Now it's been almost two years since I tried that experiment and since that time I've kept many different monster fish. The entire time I've been always in my mind with the idea of still that mix of monster and small fish and I think I finally found a perfect candidate.
This right here is my flagtail Pachilidus. This fish is living inside my 350 gallon aquarium. He is 8 inches long and he still has a long way to go. These fish come from South America. In aquariums, their common size is 14 inches, although some of them have exceeded that. And from my experience, these fish are extremely peaceful. Now I've had mine for several months and he's had his share of tank mates from smaller fish than him to larger fish and I haven't seen the slightest ounce of aggression with this fish. In my opinion, out of all the fish I keep, this is one of the most perfectly behaved fish I've ever owned. Now I have read online that people said that they have a tendency to suck the slime off of other fish but I've never noticed it with my fish and I think that that main issue might come if they're lacking algae. These fish are big time herbivores. If you watch mine, he spent the majority of his days sucking on rocks, just trying to scrape off algae. So just like a pleco, plecos are known if they're not being fed enough algae, they'll try to get the slime off a of fish. I'm guessing that's the same deal with this fish. However, all you have to do is make sure you supply algae, which really isn't that hard in an aquarium, and you won't have to worry about it. Along those same lines, if you take a look at the mouth of this Flactopagildus, this mouth is meant to be grazing on algae and it's not meant to be a predator. So that takes out the worry of this guy eating small fish. Um, the only way he can eat a small fish is if it's extremely tiny. But based on this guy's character, based on his personality, I do add feeders to this aquarium to feed my peacock bass and never does he show the slightest interest in those feeder fish. So I think that this guy is an absolutely perfect candidate. So why am I saying all this? Do I plan on creating a new aquarium with small fish and large fish coexisting? No, not yet, but now I have an idea. I have a candidate so that if I want to do it in the future, now I know that this flag to this is definitely the fish that is going to be in that aquarium. Now as I said before, this is a topic that I put a lot of thought into, so I also have two other candidates to follow up with my flag to Pachilidus. If one day I decided to create this large fish, small fish, coexisting aquarium. So right after the flag to Pachilidus, the next fish that I think would be perfect for this type of setup would be the clown loach. So you know, in my 125 gallon African cichlid tank, I have a group of six clown loaches. One of them is my most prized fish, and it is my jumbo clown loach, which is a clown loach that is about 10 inches right now and it is still growing. These fish get very big and if you look at their mouth, they have very small mouths so that prevents them from being major predators and along with that, from my experience, these fish are extremely peaceful. Now the only downside with these clown loaches is that the bigger they get, um, they get a little bit more shy. So even though my big clown loach is about 10 inches long, I see it the least out of all my smaller clown loaches and that's just because it becomes more and more shy the bigger it gets. Another great candidate for this type of aquarium would be tin for you barbs. Now at the moment I don't have any but I kept them before and they definitely are some awesome fish. They are very cheap, they grow very fast and for the most part they are very peaceful. Now the only downside about tin for you barbs is that if you keep them in little numbers, if you have too small of a group they may become misbehaving and they may become a little bit more aggressive. But if you do keep larger numbers they tend to be more within themselves and their aggression overall when it comes to other fish really lowers and I think in my opinion if I do create a mixed aquarium with different sizes these definitely will be fish in that aquarium. And the final candidate that I was able to think of for this type of setup would be silver dollars. Now I love silver dollars because you have so many different species and it's different species vary in size. So you have your smaller species being a spotted silver dollars which reach about four and a half inches. Then from there you have your striped silver dollars which can reach about six inches. Then you have your red hooks which reach about eight inches. And finally the largest species of silver dollar are your wide bar and these guys can reach 12 inches. From my experience silver dollars are like small, like large tetra. They're extremely peaceful. Um, they love being in groups. The only downside about silver dollars is that they are big time herbivores 
and they definitely cannot live in any plants at aquarium because otherwise they will shred the plants. Other than that, these fish are extremely peaceful and I think that they will work perfectly in a large small fish aquarium. Now once again, this is not an aquarium that I plan on making anytime soon. However, I think it's nice just to have all my ideas gathered so that if I ever get the opportunity, I know what fish I can use and what fish I can't use. Now at the moment, I actually have a few more other fish that I think will work in this type of setup, but I still need to observe them a little bit more and um, just watch them grow. But anyway, this has been a look at just some of the most gentle, large aquarium fish that I've kept, and mainly my flag Tocachilla disc. All the other fish I list, um, they're second runners. The first place fish is my flag Tocachilla disc. Just an awesome fish, very peaceful and enjoyable to watch. So I guess I'll finish off this video with a nice look at this guy just doing what he does best.